Hello and welcome back to All Spin TV and today we're going to be doing a long term review of my Thrustmaster TMX wheel along with the T3PA pedals and T8HA shifter. I do also play this on a play seat challenge uh, along with a low boy shifter mount. Now I've owned the wheel for 19 months. This is actually my second wheel. The first one broke at 18 months old. Uh, it had a couple of faults which I'll go on to in the next clip and that's what spurred me on to do this review. Now don't be put off, the wheel is a very very good wheel and if you keep on watching I'll explain to you what I think about the wheel, a couple of its downsides and you know a lot of its pros. For the price point I don't think it can be matched. Stay seated and I'll see you shortly. So this is an introduction to my wheel and rig setup. Now. If you're looking at this video, you're probably thinking, should I buy the TMX or the G920? And I'm here to tell you that I would say you need the TMX and the reasons why. Now, the Thrustmaster TMX wheel itself definitely does look a bit cheap and cheerful. It's not as plush as the G920 with the nice leather wrapped steering wheel. Now they are both 11 inch wheels and they both rotate from 270 to 900 degrees. Uh, the Logitech does come in cheaper but I do believe that is for a reason. Now the Logitech wheel is £215 I've seen lately for the wheel and £49.99 for the shifter meaning that its combined total was £264.99 whereas the TMX if you buy it, there's two packages you can get. You can get the TMX Pro, which is that wheel and that pedal set. Now, the TMX Pro is £220 for the wheel and pedal set, but you then you need to upgrade to the, for the shifter, which is £150. Whereas, interestingly, I found that if you get the base package, the TMX, which comes with the two pedal setup, and then upgrade... Uh, to this pedal set and gear shifter, you can get them on a deal for $164.99, meaning that it comes in at $344.98, £26 cheaper than if you go for the Pro package. Now, I'll go into the pedals quickly. The pedals, the T3PA pedal set is night and day over the two pedal set. Not only do you get a clutch, but you get metal pedals, and they're adjustable. You can move the pedals around a lot more than what you can on a two pedal set. Also, they've got a lot more spring to them. The tension on this brake is a million times better than the two pedal set. And the clutch itself is sort of in between that of the throttle and the brake. Now, in the package, you do get a conical mod that you can stick in the back here, which is like a little bit of rubber. Um, but I found, for me, it was just too much. I just didn't really need it. Um, and back on the wheel, uh, the pedals. If you are using these with socks, you will get a bit of a sore foot. Hence, I bought some very cheap and cheerful Slazinger uh, Plimsoli trainers, if you like. Whatever you do, just buy a cheap and cheerful pair with a very, very slim uh, sole. That way, um, you can feel, you've got a nice feel, and they're comfortable. They just slip on and off. Nice and easy. Uh, the TMX wheel itself is belt and gear driven. The belt is for force feedback, whereas the Logitech is a uh, gear driven both ways. Uh, I've only had a small a bit of experience with the Logitech and in my findings it was notchy and noisy. Yes it felt a little bit better on your fingers but it was noisier and you could feel the notchiness of the gears whereas if I'm honest you just can't really feel the notchiness on this wheel and it it provides the force feedback smoothly. It's very nice and linear. Um, the gear shifter is nice and day over the Logitech. It's got a lovely throw. It's actually got seven gears as well. And you can change it to a synchro box uh, with a little plate that you just take off the top there and spin it around. Now, there is some downsides to this wheel. Although it does look worse, yes it does. Um, it, I don't know if the, I've not owned a Logitech long enough to know what the build quality is like. But with the TMX, it does have a few issues. Now, on the side here is a perforated bit of rubber. And what that did is it actually wore down pretty quickly. 18 months, and that was bald. Um, and also, on the inside here, where it attaches up the inside, this actually came apart. 
and you'll see in some of my videos that I've actually got tape on all four sides of it to hold that rubber in. Second of all, uh, the gish, the paddle shifter, very nice, they're metal, they've got a nice click to them when you use them. My one broke um, probably about 16 months into ownership, it would lock on. Uh, and what we do, I use this as a handbrake, which I'll go into, um, but this would just lock my back wheels up, wouldn't let go, and I had to fiddle about with it. Then after a while, whatever was stopping that from going back broke, and then it wouldn't do that anymore, but then I had a lot of play up and down with my paddle. Now, whilst I'm on that subject, the TMX only has enough ports in the wheel for a pedal set and a gear shifter, unless you put something like a drive hub on it. Whereas the TX range, not only do you have a detachable wheel, but you have more ports, which means you can add the Sparco shifter, or you could add another T8HA uh, shifter and convert that as a handbrake. Uh, that's up to you what way you do it. I find at the moment, I just use the handbrake on the paddle. It works perfectly, but as you know, obviously you wore it out. Um, now the belts inside the case, they want they wore out. Basically, it was screeching, making loads of noise, and yeah, again, I had to get it replaced after 18 months under warranty. Um, I just wasn't happy with it. Being in the UK, we do get two years warranty. Uh, I know in America, you only get one year warranty. Not sure why. Baffling to me, I don't understand why, but you still need to use a controller when you use this wheel, because if you use a headset... This is the only place you can put it is in the controller. There is no headset connection on this wheel. I don't know if they're available on other wheels, but I found that quite strange. I thought you'd be able to put it in a little socket at the side and good to go. Um, quickly overviewing the, the seat I've got. Yes, it's a fancy deck chair. It's called the Play Seat Challenge, but it is a comfy deck chair. Um, I have managed to spend hours in this and not have any problems whatsoever. It's actually quite comfy. And I've just ordered a nice little uh, cushion to go here just to rest my neck on for when I'm cruising around. Uh, now, if you're over 5 foot 10, I think you're going to struggle to get a comfortable position on this chair. You can lower it by undoing these straps and it drops the deck down. Uh, these legs separate apart further. Uh, the problem is... Uh, you can't do anything else with the wheel uh, where the base plate attaches. You can only adjust it maybe an inch forward or backward. So I've got this on the furthest back as I can, attached the base as far back as I can. And I've had to then obviously lower the seat down to get a nice enough throw for my arms. Um, now, when I first got it, just it was just far too close. If you're around, you know, up to five foot ten, it's not going to be a problem. If you're six foot, I think you're going to struggle with a comfortable position. The the pedal set attaches on a Velcro strap, can be adjusted forwards and backwards up these arms here to get a decent length. I've never had a problem with my legs. I've got a 32 inch inside leg measurement, and it's absolutely fine and comfy, and not had a single problem. Uh, the wheel itself, again, in in functionality, is fine. Uh, it works absolutely perfect. Um, one feature I did find was quite strange is these two buttons. They only act as one. You can't configure these buttons differently. You can you can configure both sides differently, but the two buttons have to be configured as the same. Meaning that I always find that I'm either missing a horn, a rear view camera or my picture selection. I like taking pictures. So what I've done is I've opted on the settings to lose my um, rear view camera. So if I'm reversing up somewhere, I basically put it into third person and I'll back up. Or you go into the uh, camera setting where you've got the rear view mirror and you can use that. Uh, really a very minor downside, but a downside nonetheless. Now this whole setup cost me around 550 pounds. Um, and I do have a low boy shift amount off of eBay, which unfortunately you can't get anymore, although there are some other ones on there available. Um, and for that price, I know it, it does sound quite expensive, but best thing about sim rigs is you're not paying tax, insurance, MOT, you're not risking your driving license, and you can hit all the tracks in the world, you can have loads of fun, meet up with your mates online, have cruises, and all the rest of it. So if you're considering this, getting into this over a controller user, definitely, definitely do it. Now, 
you will not jump on this and instantly be like Lewis Hamilton or some Drift King. It's not going to happen, all right? I've been driving for 18 years. I got on this wheel and it took me a couple of months to get proper good with it, if I say, you know, as good as what I was with a controller. Um, you do need to configure the settings, which I'll go into later on in the video. You need to adjust it to how you want it to feel. Out of the box, it feels quite weak. It's got a lot of rotation on there, and it's just not an easy way into the wheels. You really do need to configure it. All right, so what we'll do, we'll jump back into the video, and I'll go through that with you. See you there. So hello, welcome back. So you've seen the overview of the wheel and the thoughts that I've come across. And now we'll just go for a gentle little cruise and I'll explain some more. Now, as the wheel goes, this is a great entry point into the sim world. Now, I have owned this wheel as I say for 19 months. I've had lots of fun with it. Um, yes, it has got a few downsides and it did break, but then I have put a lot of punishment through this wheel. I do a lot of drifting, I'm constantly meeting up with my friends and we're racing, doing all sorts of games, banger racing, police, cops, robbers, you name it, we do it. We have fun on the wheel. So I have put the wheel through its paces. Now, I was a little bit shocked that the wheel actually broke so prematurely, but then the way I treated it, I didn't really what should I say, look after it. I was fighting the wheel quite a lot to start with until I learned how to actually drive properly. Now, if you are looking into this and you haven't got a wheel, you are not going to jump onto a wheel straight away and drive like a Formula One driver or a drifter. The wheels do take getting used to. Uh, you are not receiving any G-forces from anything other than the force feedback from your wheel so therefore you have to learn what the wheel is telling you and in a previous video how to drift with a wheel I did go through some of this uh, advising you on what to look for what to look out for and the best way of setting up your wheel now I find that the settings are probably the biggest part of being getting to grips with your you know, if out of the box this wheel feels a bit loose, it's got 900 rotation on it, and if you're not used to this style of driving and, and you don't know what the wheel is trying to feed back to you, it's going to be difficult for you to just jump straight on and get on with it. Now, I suggest, first of all, that you actually go into your settings, you reduce the wheel rotation, and then go from there. Now, I'll jump into my settings now, and I'll show you what I've done with my settings. Now feel free to copy these and then adjust them to what you want. Now if you go into the wheel settings, you must be on your wheel when you do this. Press your right hand paddle to go over to wheel, press your advanced button and then skip all the way to the bottom. Now I usually use my wheel between 720 and 750. Um, you can have this at 900. Do not get me wrong, this wheel can be used at 900. But I personally, I use my handbrake as my right hand paddle. And when I've got it on 900, it's difficult to track my right paddle. Whereas at 720 to 750, it's always on the left or the right, it's either side of the wheel, I can always easily grab it. And also the wheel feels just about right as it is. I find that with this, we'll call budget wheel, um, it doesn't spin back or center or quite rotate without a bit of guidance at 900. Whereas I feel at 720 to 750, it rotates back perfectly. Now, these are my settings. I'll keep it on 720 for now. Um, on my drift video, I did say if you're learning how to drift, drop it down to somewhere between 630 and 690. That's sort of the perfect learning area. And then you can raise it up or do whatever you want with it but that is the perfect area to learn um, now your other settings your force feedback minimum force now this this I like to keep in the middle um, it just keeps it linear and responsive now if you drop it it's gonna have a larger uh, response to the tire whereas if you uh, raise it you will then have a um, 
a more difficult feeling with the tyres. You, you can't feel exactly what the tyres are doing. The force feedback understeer. Um, now this really is is it, it it gives you the feeling of when you're losing traction from the front of your car. Um, again, these two I've not really adjusted since I've had the wheel. I got them how I wanted them, and I've I've left them. The next few are really the important ones. The wheel damper scale. Now this is the value of the input you're putting into your wheel to turn it and this is complete personal preference i like mine slightly heavy but on the scale it's on the lower side to medium but i feel at this uh setting it feels just about right now i would adjust it up or down five points either way to then you know adjust it as you like it just take your time with this one and just as you're turning it raise it or lower it depending on what you want from it the center spring scale is probably one of the most important that i find on this board now i've got mine at 115 i have had it in the past up to around about 130 and this is the wheel rotating back to the center when you're losing traction or when you're drifting and this is a really helpful setting to get right to really guide you along when you're sliding around. Um, this will recenter your wheel and it sort of follows when you're sliding the angle of what the slide is. It really does help you in that retrospect. Your force feedback scale is obviously the amount of power that the force feedback is, is running through your wheel. Now I've had this on maximum. Um, and I did have it around about 50 60 to start with and I do dabble with this quite a lot But I find at 65 It's it's about right on this game some car wheels some cars feel lighter or heavier than others So some of the JDM cars are quite heavy steering some of the sport cars are quite light steering So I've sort of keep it around about 65 just gives me that good balance between all the cars I don't have to keep changing my settings now ideally these settings. I don't really ch I don't just change them all every day I do have a little fiddle here and there, but I just these are my base settings that I basically keep all the time now this is controversial some people do some people don't but my vibration scale is on zero and at the top it is off I do not want my wheel vibrating um, my force feedback is the most important part of the wheel and that's what I want to feel all the time I don't want it juddering around at any point um, my e-brake again is on my paddle so it's really an on and off button that doesn't matter clutch again is personal preference I've done 10 and 80 um, some cars are very grabby like this Alfa Romeo Giulia and some Skylines and JDM cars they've got very grabby clutches anyway um, so again personal preference whatever you like um, steering axis dead zones you don't want a dead zone so 0 and 100 steering linearity you want this bang in the middle if you move this around I find that you as it says on the right hand bar you will lose either accuracy at the bottom or accuracy at the top basically just leave that alone um, other than that you can see they're pretty much the standard um, settings now I will just go back to this minimum force I think I've explained that wrong now it says in a bar this sets a pneumatic trailer line torque which scales the build up of the force feedback with lateral load larger values provide an aggressive tire response with lateral input and a heavier feeling lower values provide a more linear response curve and lighter feeling Yes, that's correct. So what I did is I left that in the middle. Can't go wrong if it's in the middle. It gives the best of both worlds. Now, feel free to screenshot these and carry these over. As I say, you can drive on 900. It's not a problem. But when you're first learning out your wheel and what your wheel is trying to feed back to you, these are the good settings I would say for you to learn. Again, you can drop your wheel rotation down to about 630 and then gradually raise it up as you become more and more familiar with your wheel. Now, when I'm cruising along, I tend to turn my HUD off. Uh, again, if you go into your HUD display, you can turn all your HUD off just when you're cruising. I just find it more immersive. 
Another setting that's pretty good is your drift camera. If you want to start sliding and you use the cockpit view like I do, I tend to, I'm 99% of the time I'm in the cockpit. I only really use the third person when I'm doing a video. So these are my drift camera settings. Have a fiddle with these. Um, feel free to copy mine. Uh, I quite enjoy these. I don't, I've never ever changed them. Once I got them how I wanted them, I've left them as they are. So we'll go back to the wheel. In night time, probably not a good start. I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll pause and we'll come back when it's daytime. Well, I've jumped into a, a Porsche, which is a, a nice grip car. This is a Porsche Cayman GT4. It's one of my favorite drivers car on the steering wheel. Awesome feedback, feedback through the uh, wheel. Um, if it gets out of hand, you can't put drift suspension on this, so it can be a little bit snatchy, but it's a really, really good drive. Um, it's just sounds good as well, like a Porsche sound. Now, when you're using your wheel, when you go into understeer, your wheel will go light, and that is telling you that you're losing traction on your front wheels. Now, the opposite can be said when you are going to lose your back end oversteer. What will happen is your centre spring will start tugging. Um, it's a bit difficult to show you in this car, but you'll find that it just wants to pull your wheel the opposite way. Now these things you've got to learn um, from the force feedback to understand what the wheel is doing in your hand and what the car is doing. Um, these are the bits that you need to learn, as I say, uh, before you can really start pushing it. And that's a difficulty where you've got no g-forces, uh, lateral movement in your body, your bum, and you can feel the car moving around underneath you. All of the force feedback is being done through the wheel, so it can be quite strange when you're first getting into the sim world with the wheel. Um, all of us have got five, six, seven, ten plus thousand pounds to buy a moving rig. So you just have to get to know what your wheel is teaching you. Now I have done a drift video uh, on how to drift with the wheel. If you want to go to my videos and have a look at that, I'm going to do a part two of that. And I'm also going to do a how to set up your car for grip driving. I find that, especially in Forza, the way you set your car up is so important. Um, I can make my car feel a million times better with five minutes spent on each car. And that really is done with a few calculations, uh, which I will go into in a later video. Now, if you found this video helpful, please subscribe. Hope you liked it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.